Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Death Mode playthrough episode. We are playing as Raiden the Rogue using only rogue weapons. And last episode, we defeated the Slime God and we went into the Abyss. Unfortunately, our Abyss was a little bit walled off, so I stopped exploring it. But a lot of people have told me that you can actually dig through it. So I've cleared out some pathways in the Abyss and we can head back there this episode and keep looking for that Lionfish because that's a pretty powerful rogue weapon. Another thing I did in between episodes was prepare for the Wall of Flesh fight. Let me show you what I did. So we've got an arena that I built and it's all out of ash blocks. So the way I got all of the ash blocks to build that arena was actually from this builder NPC right here. He sells it for super cheap. And the good thing about this is it controls where the Wall of Flesh will be located. Chris Taps from the Discord channel had actually mentioned to me that if I build it pretty close to the roof, all of the bouncing gel darts will actually do a lot of extra damage. So I'm hoping that will do pretty well for us. But yeah, that's the arena, and we're definitely going to be fighting the Wall of Flesh this episode and getting into hard mode. But before we do that, I want to head to the Abyss and try to find that lionfish. I also have a bunch of stuff that I found in the underworld. I found a few voodoo dolls, and I even found this ashen stalactite. So it's pretty sweet. We've definitely outgrown it though. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I farmed up the Desert Scourge a few more times and we've got the Stress Pills finally. And the Stress Pills actually got reworked. Um, they do a bonus of four defense and then you have max movement speed and acceleration increased by 5%. And then receiving a hit causes you to only lose half of your max adrenaline rather than all of it. Well, we're in the Sulfurous Sea now and it's time to head down and see what we can find. You can see we're falling a lot faster now that we've got our jagged iron boots. Overall, we're really well set up for this biome. So we just got past the blockade and here we have an archer fish gravitation. Unfortunately, no lionfish. You can mine the abyss gravel. It just takes a few extra hits. So we've got a chest beside us on the right hand side. We can see that from the map. And let's see what we got here. We got the frog. That was really good for Magnus the Mage. And hopefully we'll get something good in this chest. And these big ore fish are pretty tanky. The strange orb. So this provides a large amount of light while underwater. So let's go ahead and put that on. That's good. I think we're going to be running out of chests soon. Plus we're getting deeper and deeper, so we're going to be losing lots of breath. Oh, and we got the lionfish. That's amazing. And the sound just changed, which means we entered the scary part of the abyss right there. And we got our last thing that we needed, which is really excellent. And of course, like I said, we had entered the new part of the abyss and a colossal squid just one shot us. So let's see what this lionfish does. So it basically throws a fish. <laughs> okay. So it kind of sticks to the dummy and it seems to be doing some damage over time. Okay. That's pretty good. Well, I organized our inventory and I got all of our gear back to normal. And I think we are pretty much good to go to fight the wall of flesh. The loadout that I'm going to use is mainly the gel dart. We've got our Frostbark Boots, Counter Scarf, the Coin of Deceit for extra damage because it does rogue critical strike chance. And then we've got Stress Pills and the Raider's Talisman for extra damage as well. So let's grab some Voodoo Dolls and head down to our arena and get this going. And you can see we're pretty close to the top of the wall. So when these daggers hit the ground, they're going to be doing these bounces and doing lots of extra damage. So hopefully that will work out pretty well for us. Let's go ahead and start up the boss fight here and let's see how this goes. I am quite excited and also quite nervous for this fight. The wall of flesh can really put out a lot of damage. But it seems like we're doing pretty well here. We don't want to get too far away because it will limit our damage. We're going to stay pretty close here. And we just want to try dodging these lasers as best we can.
Okay, well, this is going pretty well. It's going to be the final part of the fight where it really gets rough because the lasers increase their speed, the boss increases its speed. And then that's why I've got Rage saved up for that. Hopefully we can also get some adrenaline going here soon. Man, the new song is really pretty awesome. It makes the battle so much more intense. Uh-oh, taking some hits here. I think we're running out of arena. I know that once when we get to this part, that means we're getting close. Okay, let's do some rage because this is going to get really bad if I run out of arena. Oh no, we're into the jungle. I don't think I built much past the jungle. Maybe if we get adrenaline. There we go. Oh my goodness, this is more stressful than I was anticipating. 19%. Oh, I gotta keep doing damage. Okay, we're gonna have to freestyle this. Oh my gosh, we leveled up our rogue proficiency. Oh no, we're to the end of our world. No. No. <laughs> oh, the pain. The pain. I can't believe we didn't have enough runway space. Well, at least we were doing pretty well until that point. So what I'm going to do is go buy a bunch more ash blocks. Okay, well, we're back in the underworld. We've got like 800 ash blocks, so we can build this over a little bit. Well, we've extended our arena a decent amount, so let's go ahead and try this again and see if we can do a little bit better this time. I definitely want to be more careful about focusing on damage and less about survivability. I also may try bouncing the darts a little bit more. I'm not 100% sure if bouncing them will do more damage. So we're just going to have to kind of see how things go here. I'm taking more damage this time. But I'm definitely focused a little bit more on trying to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, death mode wall of flesh is definitely very tanky. I know everyone's got different ways to fight this boss, but I find that kind of jumping up and down really can help me with, you know, focusing on dodging the lasers. Because I don't really focus too much on my aim, I just kind of keep holding the trigger down and there's so much to hit, I generally am landing some sort of shot. The main thing is just dodging the lasers as best I can. Okay, well, we're a little bit farther than we were last time at this point, for sure. Down to 40%, and we still have rage. Okay, well, I think we're going to activate rage and start doing some extra damage. Maybe we'll try bouncing our darts a little bit. Yeah, maybe bouncing these will do better. We're doing like 300 DPS, 400 DPS. Four percent. Oh my gosh, we're getting so close. And we got him. Yes, we still have a decent amount of space on this side of the map too. So from the boss, we got the Crimson Key, which we can use in the Crimson Island to get our vampire knives later on. We have the Meow Thrower. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It sounds like the Meow Mirror. And then we have the Box of 100 Medicines. So what it says to do is right click when you have it in your hotbar. And it says you've been blessed by the third sage. So whenever I die and respawn, I'll have full health. We also have the demon heart, which is amazing. It adds an extra accessory slot. So we'll use that for sure. And now we can put on some other accessories. I'm not sure which one we want to use. Maybe Luxor's gift. 
We also have the Pwn Hammer, which can upgrade to this awesome weapon later on. We also have the Charm of Luck, which makes us get better reforges, and that can upgrade later on as well. Now I think it's time to see if we can find some essence in the underworld, because that will help us craft some pretty good things. I think we can do an upgrade to this glaive right here. We just need Essence of Chaos. Man, we're taking lots of hits there. I think we can get some Essence of Chaos pretty quickly if we find our Brimstone biome. So let's go look to the left and we'll probably find it. Now it's time to farm up some Essence real quick. Man, we're picking it up fast now. Three more Essence right there. Ooh, we got a Lava Charm. Awesome. So I think we've definitely got enough Essence now. We've got 12 of them. So let's head back to base. And we can craft our first upgraded weapon. It looks like the Rogue's actually also selling a new weapon. The Slick Cane. Sweet. Let's uh, put that on for sure. <laughs> so this weapon right here is actually not a throwing weapon. It's a, like a melee weapon, but it's got Rogue damage. Well, I spent like 50 gold on it, re-rolling it to Unreal before I tried it out, and that might be a mistake. But who knows, maybe this will actually be better than I think. So it looks like it gives you gold and stuff as you attack enemies. Kind of interesting. Here's the upgrade to the Glaive, and I definitely want to try it out. 211 rogue damage. That looks pretty dang powerful. This one can stack up to three times as well, which means we need to buy several more of these Glaives. This definitely makes me happy that I got some extra Essence of Chaos. Well, now I've got a full stack of three, and let's see how this one does. I think this is going to definitely be my best weapon for a while. I think with the Blazing Star upgrade, we're going to be able to do pretty well right away. I definitely want to pick up some Essence of Elium, because the next upgrade that I really want to do is the upgrade to the Crystalline. Ooh, and we definitely need to kill some green jellies. Because if we can start getting our Grand Gelatin put together, that will help a lot on a few of the different fights. Uh-oh. We found the Stylus, but we're stuck in a really bad biome. We gotta get out of here before we're killed by Black Widows. Oh my goodness. This is not good. Man, it is crazy how much stronger we are just by picking up one hard mode weapon. Well, we have the wizard. Excellent. There we go. We got our vital jelly there. That means we just need to go to the ocean and pick up the last jelly, and then we'll have our grand gelatin accessory. Oh, we got a pig ground over here. Gotta kill that guy before he sneaks up on us. Well, we're finally getting some souls of night as well. That's quite helpful. I think the demon wings are actually pretty good. Right now we're using skyline wings, which are the pre-hard mode ones. We crafted them, but I ended up really not needing them, so I didn't use them much, but they're still pretty good. And it's nice to have something right off the bat. We've got four essence of Elium. That might be enough to craft the upgraded Crystalline. I definitely need some more Essence of Elium because I want to fight the Cryogen boss pretty soon. And I know we need Essence of Elium to summon him. Oh, we got the Skeleton Merchant. Let's see if he's got anything that's useful for us. I mean, I guess we could buy some bombs. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh, that was scary. <laughs> I was not ready for that. Ooh, we got an Earth Elemental. This is good. We definitely need to get the Sandstorm Summons. It's actually a pretty good arena to fight him in, too. We could kind of do a circle. And let's see what we got. Aftershock, so a melee weapon. Now we can craft the Prismaline, and this looks so good. I really like the Crystalline. And now we've got this one which is very similar, but it shoots out way more projectiles. I have a feeling this is gonna be really good against Cryogen. Another thing I just realized we can do is buy Life Force Potions now, now that we're in hard mode. 
And I think this is the last potion I need in order to do a combination potion. So let's go ahead and see if that's the case. I want to try to combine to a battle combination, which is just Endurance, Life Force, Iron Skin, Restoration, Rage, and Wrath. So now that we've got the battle combination, we don't need to have just so many buffs on at the same time, which is pretty helpful. So now that we've got a few upgrades and I feel like we're a bit stronger, I think it's time we grab our Pwn Hammer and we head over to the Corruption. And that way we can get some of these altars broken and we can start upgrading to our Mithril Anvil. I don't think I'm really going to farm up any Adamantite, but we definitely need the upgraded Anvil for hard mode. And that will give us the option to craft a few really powerful accessories and also the Daedalus armor and stuff once when we defeat the Cryogen boss. So here we are in the old arena and we have an Adamantite world. And that's fine. Like I said, we're probably not going to even bother crafting Adamantite. The main thing will be to defeat Cryogen and upgrade to Daedalus because that will be the armor set we'll use for quite a while. I feel like the Blazing Star is actually a little bit better. Yeah, it seems to do a lot more damage. Okay, I think that's good. Let's head back to base and we can grab some Spelunker potions and head down and start upgrading our pickaxe and all that sort of stuff. Okay, well we found our first Palladium and it should be pretty quickly. We broke plenty of altars. Well, we've got 54 Palladium. Let's hope that's enough. And I think we might be able to do a pickaxe. Yes, just enough. That's actually perfect. Well, we're picking up quite a bit. We've got 92 now. Oh, we got a little bit more right here. Although this is probably not worth it. <laughs> probably gonna get killed by spiders. We didn't die, that's good. Awesome, looks like we're in the hollowed now. This will actually be a really good easy way to farm up some souls of light. Just kill a bunch of these enemies down here. I think this is the chest I missed. So let's grab a shadow key and open this up. It didn't really have anything, but it's still nice to get it. Well, we got plenty more materials now. We've got some more chaos and Elium, but most importantly, we've got a bunch of the aura calcum. So let's create some of those bars. And let's create our new anvil. Excellent. And we can put that in here in place of our iron anvil. And now we can craft our new pickaxe. Here we go. That means we can get adamantite and upgrade our hellforge to an adamantite forge. But before we do that, I want to run to the beach and let's get our last jelly. We should be able to get it pretty quickly here. There's so many jellies down here. We actually haven't explored this area yet. We've got the siren over there, but definitely not ready to fight the siren. It just said something is approaching. And I think we all know what that means. Duke Fishron just naturally spawned. What the heck? This is insanity. I have never seen Duke Fishron just randomly spawn like this. I know this is a death mode thing, that bosses spawn in different biomes, but oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck? Duke Fishron randomly spawns at the start of hard mode. I was just minding my own business, trying to get some jellyfish, and Duke Fishron has to come and bully us. There we go, we just got our jelly. Excellent. And now that we've got our hard mode anvil, and we've got our different jellies. We can craft our grand gelatin. And this is so powerful. It does 10% increased movement speed, 200% increased jump speed, plus 20 max life, mana, standing still, boosts life and mana regen. So you can see already we are flying really fast and this is with skyline wings, which is kind of unbelievable. And if we were to add our frog legs to this, which we can actually buy frog legs from one of the NPCs and I did that in between episodes. So if we use frog legs, 
we're flying so fast and we've got like super early wings. These aren't even hard mode wings and we're flying way faster than lots of wings in the game. That's definitely enough vertical speed to defeat a lot of different bosses. We probably need some more horizontal speed, so we'll need to pick up some hard mode wings for sure. Well, this episode we defeated the Wall of Flesh, we got the Blazing Star, we got the Prismaline, we've upgraded our pickaxe and got some new crafting stations, we even got destroyed by Duke Fisheron, and next episode we'll definitely be ready to go to fight Cryogen. I think I may try it with just Statagel armor, and I think we may need to have like the Deific amulet, that'll be a good thing to craft in between episodes or get some of the ingredients farmed up. I really enjoy the start of hard mode. There are so many awesome boss fights right off the bat. We've got the mech bosses, we've got the brimstone elemental, the aquatic scourge, cryogen. So many fun fights right at the beginning of hard mode. And we also have the rust and dust update coming out today or tomorrow. I'll definitely update my calamity version and we'll start exploring the new content with Raiden as well as with showcases and all sorts of good stuff. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.